Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are in the Netherlands in search of master's, PhD and postdoc opportunities. So we are at the University of TU Delft in the Netherlands and there are fully funded scholarships here that will cover your full tuition and also give you some money for your living allowance. So there are a number of them here, but we'll be looking at particularly the Justice Louis Van Helfen Scholarship. And I'm looking at this one particularly because it's um, lessons from this one could be used to apply for other ones. And this one covers all eligible master's courses or master's programs at this university, while the others have selected master's programs. And the others are also fully funded, by the way, or most of them are fully funded, by the way. We'll be using this one as an example but just in case you're interested in the other ones, please kindly um, kindly apply for them as well. And to see whether you can apply for more than one, I think you should just check the FAQ section of the website. So read through and see whether it's possible to apply for more than one scholarship. So let's let's begin without any further delay. There are also PhD opportunities, of course. PhD opportunities in a number of European countries are posted as job opportunities. So this is under job vacancies, and you can see here already some PhD opportunities. So in case there are PhD applicants in the house, quickly check on your own and see if you find a course that suits your background and your qualification. So let's go to the Van Helsing Scholarship, Justice Lewis Van Helsing Scholarship. So this is a fully funded scholarship, covers your two-year tuition. So any two-year course um, at this university is eligible for international applicants, as you can see. So contains basic information about what you should do. And this is the deadline. And the results will be out at the end of March, 2023. So the deadline is in December, 1st December, and the results will be out in March, 2023. So it covers your full tuition, as you can see here, full tuition fees and contribution for the living expenses. So it's a good one, covering your tuition, covering your living expenses. So how do you apply? You have to apply for one of the eligible master's courses. So there are several master's courses here at this university, and you have to apply for at least one of them. So you could check out the different master's courses here. Go to the programs. Go for your master's courses, the different master's courses. Yeah, we'll be coming back to them shortly. And then there's a different application for um, the scholarship. So once you've applied for the master's, you have to come back to apply for the scholarship differently. So it's important to have this in mind. And there's an application form here for the scholarship. So this is the scholarship application form. And there are some questions they might ask you to um, elaborate on, like introduce yourself. Yeah, I suggest to just tell them your background. That's the country you're applying from or the country you're coming from, what you studied in undergrad, your briefly about your work experience, your research experience, your academic goals and aspirations, just short, just put the relevant information about where you're coming from, academic background, professional background, and aspirations, just as short as possible, if the 100 words can contain it. Then here, they said you should um, elaborate, I think, um, what makes you an excellent student besides your grade. So here you could talk about things like um, how you're good at um, group work, for instance, working with people. You could talk about um, things like your personal attributes, such as um, interpersonal skills, 
how you're self-driven, um, how you're um, well, related to the first one we talked about, um, collaborative, that teamwork we talked about. There's like extracurricular activities as well that you engage in apart from like volunteer experiences, for instance, that you know that um, apart from the grades, you also have to like use your skills to help society, to help the community. So interpersonal skills, um, self-driven volunteer activities, um, hobbies, productive hobbies like sports, music, and things like that. Because here they ask for broader interests besides studies. So those extracurricular activities will be important. And yeah, this is a very usual question they ask. Why did you choose this university? And why are you applying for a scholarship? For why you chose the university, you have to go to the course page of the program you're applying for. So read the course page properly. For instance, if you're applying for architecture, and um, urbanism and building science. You have to read this very closely and bring out the skills that this course will furnish you with. So bring out the skills, bring out the knowledge, the tools that this course would help you with. And then summarize them here and say, I'm applying for, to this university because of this course. And this course is um, well equipped with these skills. And I believe getting this degree would equip me or help me um, with this set of skills that will put me forward in the job market or help me actualize my goals. And also say something or two about the university itself. You know, say something about the university. I think this particular question, by the way, is about the university. So check out things about the national ranking of the university. Check um, what stand them out at the end of the day. You could always do this through just Googling that what stands this university out? What is their strongest point? And then why you're applying for a scholarship? You can talk about financial need, that you're a young professional trying to excel in your field and you do not have sufficient funds to um, pursue your studies. And you'll be grateful if this same um, financial assistance is given to you because you're full of promise, you're full of big dreams, you're very intelligent as seen in your um, your academic performance. You are quite driven as seen in, in your um, volunteer experiences and your professional experiences. So you need this extra financial push to amplify your contribution towards society. So this one talks about what we've said already. I think you should speak more here about the course you're applying for why you speak more here about the university in particular. So I hope that is clear because I kind of mixed the question a little bit initially. So for this first question, you speak more about the university and then why you're applying for a scholarship, financial need, a driven young professional that needs that financial boost to get to the next level and to amplify contribution to society. Why well, here you're talking about the course particularly. That's why it is important to go to the course page and see what you can extract from this. Do not copy and paste, but summarize in your own words the skills you think you learn from this and how the skills will help you in the future. So then you go about career plans. You could always start with short-term goals, long-term goals, if the and if this would have, if the word count would allow. So what do you want to do after the course? And what is your overarching goal? What is that big lofty idea that you have in mind? So the short-term or medium-term goal would be something you do most immediately after the course. Either probably go back to your place of work that you're coming from and apply for a more senior role or get a start uh, a startup moving or apply for a government job or something, start a project or become a trainer. Then for the long-term goal, talk about your overarching goal, like probably becoming the minister of, um, of um, the environment or helping um, in building up something from the scratch and becoming the CEO of, uh, of something in your field. You understand what I mean? The bigger, loftier goals. And always make sure you would um, connect them to the skills that you intend to acquire in this university and the, the master's program you're applying for. And I hope that is clear. There are lots of videos actually on my channel on essay writing. So if you want to check them as well, I will show them to you at the end of this um, video. 
So then they're also asking for references and here they give you how to submit the references. And um, yeah, that's it. Then English language certificate. They didn't say much about exemptions, whether those who studied the English language are exempted, but you can always verify from them and ask, well, I studied in the English language, do I need to submit an English language test at the end of the day? So that takes me to the required documents. The diploma is like your certificate, your transcript. The English language test we just talked about. We are not sure whether the exemptions or not, so you have to consult the university if you do not have any of the tests. Motivation letter, you know what the motivation letter is all about, why you want to study in the university, what skills you intend to acquire, um, what um, what's your background, the academic background, the professional background, and what you hope to achieve in the future. There is also a video on this channel on how to write a motivation letter. Please check it out. I'll probably put a link to it in the description box below. Also a CV. There's also a video on this channel on how to write a CV. Um, proof of identity. I would um, advise you to put like a, a snapshot of your passport, your national international passport, or a national ID or something that identifies you. For the CV, I think, um, as I said, there's a video already talking about the CV. Probably put a link to it at the description box below as well. So reference letters, portfolio, as you can see, the asterisk is not compulsory. Probably for those in um, building and architecture. Then GRE, just for a few courses, not all the courses as well. You can see the list of courses here that require the GRE, about six or seven of them. Yeah, so that's it. Portfolio as well. Most of mostly for those in design, building, and things like that. Yep, so that's it. So, this is what we talked about in the English language um, section. And um, as you can see, there's no word on exemption here. So, you might want to either take the test or engage with the university and see if you'll be given an exemption. So, before we go, I'll quickly show you that there are other scholarships here apart from the Justice Louis Van Helfen, as I said. For instance, if you scroll down, you see this one, Q Tech Scholarship. It's for those applying for physics, computer science, electronic, electrical engineering, computer engineering, embedded system. Also has the same date as a um, deadline between the Van Helfen scholarship we saw earlier. Um, the result date is a little bit different, but it covers similar um similar things as the john justice health and um, scholarship such as tuition fees and contribution towards living expenses so most of these scholarships here cover the same so just check them out and see also check the faq section if you can apply for multiple scholarships as well finally this is my youtube channel and there are several materials here already that could help your application. As I said, there are videos here on like writing a statement of purpose or a letter of motivation. Things about how to write a CV is also here. So some of these documents, you might have to submit them as well. So CV, statement of purpose. I also read out my own statement of purpose as well. So these would help your application. And of course, there are essays here. They are like how to write essays for different scholarships, including the Commonwealth, including um, the Chevening Scholarship, including MasterCard. These videos would also help you um, with tips on how to write scholarships or essays for other scholarships, apart from these ones listed here. So you might want to get acquainted with them. And of course, there are different other scholarships flying about, different countries. Just last time we had the Erasmus Scholarship, we have the Clarendon at Oxford. There are also several other scholarships all around the world. So make sure you catch one of them at least. And as usual, we cannot wait to celebrate you. Do not forget to subscribe before you leave because many more juicy opportunities are coming your way. Bye-bye for now, and I'll see you at the top sooner than later.